All right, guys, Benjamin Bakeman here, professor at BYU. Thanks for coming on today, man. We're going to talk some health. Yeah. yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, my favorite topic. Yeah, and you do a lot of research on it, so you can actually speak from data and numbers, which I like. I do, yeah. I mean, as a scientist, I'm the director of the Metabolism Research Lab at BYU, and this is where I live and breathe. Yeah, and you've done studies on visceral fat. We were talking off camera about how Asians actually are more prone to getting it, right? That's exactly right. Yeah, let's. I'll be happy to get into it. Yeah, so what is it certain foods or diets that are more causing of it? Yeah, that's a great question. So just by way of background, this is something that has become so apparent globally that some ethnicities have a lower tolerance, if you will, to fat. Um, that that I did my postdoctoral fellowship work in Singapore, of all places. You know, mm. beautiful country in Southeast Asia. We loved living there, every minute of it. But why would Singapore invest so much in metabolism and diabetes research? It's because they've, they, they're seeing this in real time across the various ethnicities that live in Singapore, and it's a beautiful multicultural kind of melting pot, you can take on one end of the spectrum a uh, kind of European Caucasian guy, slap 10 extra pounds of fat on his body, and he's just a little chubbier. Mm. Everything else is fine. Every clinical marker is totally normal. You take a guy who has the exact same body type, but it, now he's a Chinese Singaporean ethnicity, put that those 10 pounds on him, now he's got fatty liver disease, he's got high blood pressure, he has got prediabetes. And so there's this idea of a, of a fat threshold. Basically, how much fat can your body hold before it becomes pathogenic or harmful? Mm. And that Asian body type just has a lower tolerance or capacity to store fat. And it's pure, it's heavy, heavy genetic, yeah. um, which is to say that the healthiest place to store fat is subcutaneous fat, the fat that you can pinch and jiggle. Mm. The, the most problematic place to store fat is visceral fat the fat that's tucked within that abdominal space. Right. And that's where more Asians tend to store fat. It's very, very well documented. You can take people, their studies in men and women, look at the same percent body fat, and the Asian will have more fat centrally, even in the liver. Wow. And that ends up being a gateway to bigger liver problems. Fatty liver disease can become, a, a, what was once a fatty liver becomes a fatty and scarred liver. So you start moving into cirrhosis. So while nutrition plays is a problem globally, uh, and, and we always used to say the American diet, then it was the Western diet, now it's the global diet. Mm. It doesn't matter where you go, from Singapore to the US and everywhere in between, it's high fat, high sugar. So everyone has that pressure to store more fat, and it's more complicated than just calories in, calories out. But different body types have a lower threshold for that fat, and that Asian body type with South Asian, Indian, that's, those are the bodies that have the least uh, tolerance or the lowest threshold that they can handle a little fat and anything that goes beyond that begins to be problematic. Crazy. So when you're measuring your body fat percentage, does visceral fat pop up on that? Well, it depends on how you're doing it. Yeah. So if you're measuring body fat through what is commonly the most common method of doing it, the poor man's method is just these skin calipers. Right. We are doing pinching with these little kind of, well, a pincher device, a caliper that will not in any way account for um, visceral fat. Mm. Um, then it needs to be like a deeper scan, like an MRI or, or a DEXA scan. But for everyone listening, they're, they're not going to go do that. You know, most people don't have the ability to go do yeah, that. It's expensive, simple right? It's expensive. Simple test. You can do it at home. Get a measuring tape, measure the biggest part around your belly, and then times that by two. Mm. And if that number times two ends up being less than your height, it suggests you're okay. Wow. It suggests you're okay. Now, it... It's a little more complicated than that, but by and large, that very, very simple metric, waist circumference times two, if it's greater than your height, that's a huge red flag. If it's less than your height, you got you, you, you could be okay. Yeah. I wish more insurance providers uh, covered MRIs, honestly, because... Oh, I totally agree. Yeah, we were talking about mine, and I'm 27, just to give people context, and I'm pretty skinny. Yeah. I was a distance runner my whole life, so my body fat was usually in the single digits, mm -hmm. and I got an MRI last month, visceral fat everywhere. Do you know, was it visceral fat alone? Like, so visceral fat sometimes includes fatty liver. Mm -hmm. Do you know, did, they, was, did that include liver? Uh, yeah, they did all my organs. I yeah, did a, yeah. an abdominal scan. Yeah. So it was all over my heart, liver, everywhere. I even had a cyst on one of my organs, which I don't know Maybe if that's... Maybe a kidney. Yeah, I think kidney. Yeah, so fatty liver disease um, is, a, is a pretty big spectrum um, where... Uh, and, and that, once again, is a place where Asians just put fat. Mm -hmm. um, fat goes to the liver. That's heavily, heavily dietary influenced as well as a little genetic predisposition. 
But the things that make the liver get the fattest is alcohol and fructose. Mm. So sugar or anything sweet, so fruit juice even, um, anything that is loaded with fructose, what alcohol and fructose have in common is that they're both almost entirely metabolized by the liver. Mm. So the liver has to take all this energy in and it overwhelms the liver's ability to burn. And so if the liver is overwhelmed with burning, it says, well, I'm going to divert this into fat. I'm going to hold on to this for later. And thus the liver starts accumulating fat. Yeah, so I get a blood test every year as well, and I've always had liver issues. I don't drink, so I don't know what that's from. Watch your sugar. Sugar? Even f f sugar from fruit? Absolutely. I yeah. eat a lot of fruit. Yeah, so if it's eat, I always say um, if you're eating fruit, you're generally okay, but be uh, more, most mindful of the, the most sugary of the fruits, like pineapples, mangoes. Mm. But don't drink it. Don't be drinking fruit juice or even smoothies if it's if it's a concern for fatty liver disease. A, a paper was just published on this topic just last, literally just last week. Mm. One of many papers that looked at the rate at which um, fatty liver disease was resolved in uh, across two different diets, exact same number of calories, and they just varied in the sugar content, low mm. carb or high carb, and so protein was kept the same, and then then just shifted the macros of carbs versus fats, identical calories. But the lower carb diet, which is going to be lower in fructose and sugars, had a significantly greater reduction in liver fat. So wow. not all calories are created equal. My worry would be that you would have gone to the doctor and they'd say, hey, you have a sign of fatty liver disease. You need to eat less exercise more. That's the same old, dumb advice <laughs> we've been giving people for 70 years. It's not just a matter of calories. You have to consider the hormones that are affected too. But that's a whole other topic.